Back in version 3, the dominant narrative was that elemental reactions stood above all other forms of combat in effectiveness. The release of Dendro was so impactful it crashed through the limitations of what was possible by elevating the damage floor of the entire game to a level even higher than existing teams were known for. Throughout the better part of 2023, it felt almost as if hyper carries would never be able to keep up with the ease of access, DPS potential, and versatility of reactions through their own strength alone, no matter how much support they received, making it all the more confounding when one of the first characters to be released with the advent of Fontaine stared at the meta dead in the face and trampled all over them. Novelette's addition could not have come at a more opportune time. His involvement in the story along with the station as the Hydro Sovereign, basically the Hydro Archon before Archons were even a thing, granted him no shortage of prestige. And while narrative significance doesn't necessarily translate to gameplay strengths, if anyone should be given that exception, it would be him. And they most certainly have. For today's episode of Why Everyone Plays, we'll be featuring the Chief Justice of Fontaine, Nivellet. Before we get into it, I want to first give a big shout out to our sponsor for today. Tower Fantasy is back, here to showcase their version 3.7 update, which will be out by the time you see this video. I'm sure for most of you, Tower of Fantasy needs no introduction, but for the two of you who don't, it's a free-to-play shared cross-platform open-world MMORPG where you can team up with other players to fight bosses, explore the world, gear up your units, and ride special vehicles. As a special promotion for the 3.7 update, they're having a collaboration with Neon Genesis Evangelion, a classic. Bringing an event story where you can team up with the Vera Guardians and multi-purpose humanoid decisive weapons to take on all the challenges brought on with this update, in addition to being able to serve as a pilot of Tower of Fantasy's own mecha. To commemorate this occasion, Asuka is actually being made into a playable character. Now, I'm personally more of a Rei kind of guy, but having the poster waifu of the anime will definitely draw heads for you Asuka fans out there. And the best place to test out your newly acquired Asuka is by taking on the updated Frontier Clash and earning rewards in a series of Evangelion themed events. And the new smart servant Pen Pen will be here too as a battle helper. Lastly, TOF is adding a new specialized and refitted vehicle called Soul Plugs to enable players to traverse different types of terrain. Tons of new content just got released right now, so if you used to play TOF and haven't checked it out in a while, this is a good opportunity to get back into it. So download it using my link on screen, which is also in the description, to check out the new stuff. Thanks again to Tower of Fantasy for sponsoring the video, but for now, let's get back on topic. The most satisfying thing about Nivellet's popularity for me is the sheer 180 that he embodied for the game. Like I said, for going on over two years prior to version 4, elemental reactions were the uncontested most optimal way to play the game no matter who you played. Even teams that were traditionally seen as hyper carries, such as Hutal Double Hydro, were still critically dependent on Vaporize to achieve the apex of her damage. Even then, you could make a compelling argument that the real carries of that team were actually Shinto and Yelan, while Hutal was just a driver. There were successful hyper carry iterations in the past. Shao who got a major boost following the release of Farazan and also couldn't care less about reactions, Ayaka who was the dominant force of version 2, and for a brief while, Ito's Mono Geo team held strong. But the empirical data was clear. Teams that did not make use of reactions were objectively inferior to those that did, if not in damage, then most certainly in ease of access. Not a bad thing, mind you, the framework of Genshin's combat lies in elemental reactions. It would be strange for the central combat mechanic to not have some degree of influence. All evidence was stacked against the idea of a successful hyper carry, especially one that came from an element so synonymous with reactions in the first place. But that's what makes Nivellet's short but explosive career all the more profound. The difference between a hyper carry and reaction team can be nebulous, often based on one's personal interpretation. For my money, what separates the former from the latter is the objective. For reaction teams, their party's efforts are coalesced to achieve a reaction, with the expectation that said reaction carries the bulk of your damage. Even if you're running a taser team where every character outputs considerable DPS, such as Yelan, Yaimiko, Official, and Sucrose, the primary focus is the electro charge and swirl reactions and the damage accompanying them, whether or not they're greater than the sum of each in its individual output. Hyper carry teams are the opposite. Instead of reaching a collective outcome, all efforts, both from the characters and the reactions, serve to bolster the front running unit if there's a reaction it's either not the focus or only there to maximize the character's uptime. For example, Ayaka utilizes the freeze reaction to keep enemies from moving about in order to maximize her burst damage and activate the full blizzard stray set. One would ask how the hell can there be a Hydro hyper carry when Hydro is so intertwined with reactions? It seems inevitable that any of the countless reactions would take over and be the dominant force. That appears to be the case for Child and Ayato. Both have commendable damage, and yet they're usually considered drivers for their team. Nivellet accomplishes this with two very simple words. Brute Force. The way in which he conducts battle is designed so that personal damage will always come out on top, which happens to be the main reason people like him so much. He simplifies combat. Nivellet's damage is housed in his charge attack, Equitable Judgment, a move unique specifically to him as it lets him enter aim shot mode despite being a catalyst user. After a delay, he unleashes a massive torrent of water that damages all enemies in the line of fire up to 8 times, during which he can freely move around both himself and the position of the attack. 
This essentially addresses and circumvents the two biggest problems affecting ranged weaponry in Genshin. Catalyst users have to plant themselves on the ground in order to attack, and with no way to change targeting due to the absence of a lock-on system, you have to physically move the character in order to do so, which has historically made older Catalyst users feel clunky to use. As for bow users, while they have the privilege of aim shot, its effectiveness diminishes upon realizing that barring select units with special attacks, you are permanently restricted to only attacking one unit at a time. Nevelet's charge attack lets him freely move about while firing, and with it being an aim shot, he can steer the attack however he pleases too. This has resulted in very fun, motion sickness inducing forms of combat, where you can literally spin him around and decimate everything in sight. The fact that his charge attack is also an AoE attack with very long range grants him quite possibly the best area coverage in the entire game. Of course, the damage is what makes or breaks a hyper carry's performance, and he has no shortage of that either. These days, it's almost obligatory for Hydra units to scale off of max health instead of attack. While conspiracy theories would suggest this was initially done to render them incompatible with Bennett, it had the unintended consequence of making them even stronger, as HP conversions have been known to produce extraordinary damage, evidenced by Nilu and Yelan. Nuvalet is no exception. Equitable Judgment deals a ridiculous amount of damage based on his max health per tick at the expense of draining HP if he's above 50%, but that's hardly a price to pay as even at half health, since you build health on him, 50% of his is equal to 100% of a non-HP scaler's health bar anyway. To alleviate the loss of health, this elemental skill and burst provide source water droplets, which are automatically absorbed in a wide radius whenever he charges equitable judgment. Doing so not only recovers him for up to 48% health per stack of 3, effectively negating the health loss altogether, but 3 drops instantly ready the attack, bypassing the need to charge altogether. This grants him a very straightforward and digestible win condition. Use your skill and burst to get source water drops, then spam charge attacks and repeat the cycle over and over again. In an era where units are becoming increasingly more convoluted with descriptions that make modern day Yu-Gi-Oh cards look elementary, Novella stands out as a breath of fresh air. He's extremely easy to pick up and play. You don't have to keep track of buff durations or cooldowns, nor do you have to time abilities to maximize DPS given there's no focus on reactions. You press skill and burst, then attach your phone to a fan like my editor does and spin that motherfucker to kill everything. That's another thing. Some characters can be rather unwieldy to play on a mobile device with you being only able to press two or three buttons at a time. Novellet is one of the easiest characters to play in this regard, making him a simple but effective character for PC and handheld players alike. A consequence of his simplicity is that he becomes an easy choice for content, whether fighting bosses, speedrunning through abyss, overworld explorations, or farming the same artifact domain over and over again. He covers so much. Being a charge attacker, he naturally has excellent uptime as he can theoretically attack indefinitely. Obviously, the normal rotation for him is 3 blasts of equitable judgment considering you get 9 source waters in total with his skill and burst, but you can still keep fighting beyond that. After expending the first 9, your skill should be coming off cooldown within a second, letting you fire out a 4th blast, at which point you'll likely decimate everything there is. The only enemies he's ineffective against are anyone with Hydro immunity, but for literally anything else, the amount of output you get for the input you need is hard to come by on anyone else. All that's to say, Nivellet is self-contained and self-sufficient. Any loss of health from his charge attack is reimbursed by his skill and burst, simultaneously accelerating his clear speed in the process, and in terms of sustenance, if he has spare source waters after clearing, you can briefly hold your attack to pick up the heal, then release it before you start losing health, making it so he never needs recovery unless you're taking heavy fire, but in the overworld or even artifact domains, you almost never withstand more than what he can handle since being a health scaler, he can actually face tank attacks. Hypercarries tend to have a higher investment floor on account of needing to build a party that revolves around souping them up, so if you don't have those units, or you don't have them leveled and geared, you'll need to spend more time working on them. Novella for the most part can function just fine on his own, like if he's your first and only 5 star character you can achieve a lot more on him than you can on any other hypercarry, or any other unit for that matter, if we go by their strength isolated from the context of a team. The only aspect of his gameplay that might require external compensation is that he can be staggered out of his charge attack by anything with heavy knockback, necessitating a modicum of interruption resistance or super armor from shields. But if you have Constellation 1, that all but eliminates that, as he acquires complete super armor while using equitable judgment. Players tend to be judgmental towards Mihoyo when it comes to gaining quality of life mechanics behind Constellations, especially when they're so integral to a character's playstyle. I seem to recall units like Risley, Hu Tao, Chichi and such wanting to have C1 as part of their base kit but that's mostly due to there being no alternative solution. Take Chi Chi. Everyone knows by now that her biggest deficit is the absence of any form of battery within her kit, making her one of only three characters in the game without built-in energy regeneration. And then you look at her C1 regenerating two energy every time her skill strikes a target marked by her talisman. You would think such a small yet essential component would be included in their base moveset, so if hypothetically you were one of the half dozen players adamant about using Chi Chi, you basically need Constellation 1 for her to be a functional character. It's a crutch, not a luxury if that makes sense. 
In the case of Novelette, affording him a shield isn't that much of a tall order, if anything it helps him, leading to the second reason everyone plays him. Building a team around him is pretty forgiving. His two main requirements consist of a shield to grant him super armor and disascension passive, of which you can achieve both at the same time. Being a hyper carry, Novelette needs ways to boost his damage in order to make up for the fact that he's somewhat missing out on reactions. Heir to the Ancient Sea's authority increases the damage of Equitable Judgment based on the number of reactions involving Hydro. At three distinct ones, he gets 60% bonus damage, a monumental upgrade in DPS. Ordinarily, shield uses come with a loss of power, but with this in play, so long as they can perform a reaction, and virtually every shielder can due to Hydro reacting with every single element in the game, Novelette suffers no loss of output while gaining more consistency, subsequently resulting in more DPS as you never run the risk of getting staggered out of your charge attack. Moreover, this means he can capitalize on basically any support in the game. Granted, some are more conducive to his gameplay than others, but if they can just perform a reaction, any Hydro reaction, even if they themselves don't offer any buffs to Novelette, he can buff himself, making him the most party flexible hyper carry in the game. Other hyper carries have supports that they need in order to reach the hyper carry status. For some of them, it's non negotiable. Shao and Wander need Fire Zan to attain their monstrous DPS ceilings. Ito is a dead character without Goro. Hu Tao needs either Xingqiu and Yelan or Farina and Yelan. Lenny needs Bennett and Shanling. Ayakan Risley needs Shunpo. The standard team most C0 Nuvala players go for is him, Fischl, Zhongli, and Kasaha, or Farina, Zhongli, and Kasaha, but realistically, you can use anyone and it will achieve similar results. If you want to use Baiju to shield Novelette, he can achieve Bloom reactions in place of Zhongli's Crystallize. If you want to swap out Kasaha for Venti and Washing Machine the crap out of everything, you can. You want to swap out Fischl for Beidou or Miko or Shinobu, then by all means. You can do a combination of Swirl, Crystallize, Electro Charge, or you can do Freeze, Electro Charge, and Hyper Bloom. You can do Swirl, Vaporize, and Crystallize. You can do any combination of elements. All you need for Novelette is a Shield and 3 Reactions, doesn't matter what they are. With the buff timer of 30 seconds, you pretty much only need to activate them once and he'll basically have it for the remainder of the fight. He's an extremely lenient type of K thanks to how generous the scaling on his attacks are. If you have C1, then you no longer need a Shielder and you only need 2 Reactions to get that 60% bonus damage. But that's the point. Novelette's C1 is a convenience, not a necessity. He's still remarkably effective at base, but he can get even more stupidly overpowered. That, in my opinion, is what constellations should be. Players should not have to get constellations to make up for a character's deficiencies. If they're gonna spend an extra 100 or 200 bucks to get a second copy of a character, that bonus better be worth it. And it is. That's something Mihoyo has learned about hyper carries. Those in the past were made too restrictive without producing a big enough reward for the investment, or rather, they may have been strong for their time, but with Genshin progressing and advancing in power, our standards have gone up. You'll notice the number of characters in version 4 are notably lax on party requirements compared to units in the past, and I think that all started with Novelette. They're trying to make 5 stars work with a wide variety of characters. Speaking of which, I like that there are so many ways you can upgrade his DPS. Being a Hydro unit and a Charge attacker gives you even more freedom in how you want to gear him up and party him up. It's nice that he synergizes with Farina really well. I've always been a fan of close companions and lore to be a strong pair in gameplay too. Zhongli and Hu Tao, Novelette and Farina, and over in Star Rail we have Sila and Branya, just a nice bit of detail that I enjoy. In any case, Novelette is a unit who starts out strong at base, making him a favor for new players who lack the equipment and supplementary units to reach his full potential. Once they do, however, they'll find that he scales into an absolute beast of a carry, decimating everything inside at the press of a button. Meanwhile, veteran players and whales can have the time of their lives abusing his incredible ceiling. I mean seriously, when you really get going on this guy, I reached 80k damage per tick of Hydro Bomb, which is insane. For some people, their elemental burst is like 150k. Meanwhile, you have this guy doing 500,000 per charge attack times 3. Although, to be fair, not to spoil Fontaine's story for those who still have yet to play it, but he is kind of on the same power level as Archons, if not stronger, so I'm not too surprised to see him at this level of strength. Going forward, I think all hyper carries should be designed like this, self-contained and self-sufficient, so that you can utilize a wide range of characters. Maybe not to the same extent as Novelette because then we power creep the game really hard, but the general idea of making them usable for players of all demographics and account situations is a huge reason why everyone plays him. Definitely one of the best units released in version 4. What do you guys think about the Hydro Sovereign? Do you think he's overrated or do you agree with my points? Feel free to share it in the comments. That's gonna be it for today, so if you enjoyed the video, it would be great if you could leave a like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Farsfarm, join my Discord server, and check out my other Why Everyone Plays videos if you haven't yet. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.